Yes, smart summon. The Tesla feature that enables you to summon or call the car to come to you from across a car park up to a distance of about 60 meters away is finally available in Australia. So geeks like me get really, really excited. Um, it's been available in the US since about mid-September, so for a couple of months now, but I noticed a couple of days ago that the software update with this feature as part of it finally became available on my Model 3. So um, as far as I can tell, I'm one of the very lucky few that's had this enabled. I expect that in about three or four weeks, all the Model 3s will have this enabled. Um, but yeah, very exciting. So Thursday morning, as soon as I saw the software update, I downloaded it via Wi-Fi and enabled it. And it's taken me a couple of days to source some, um, some better phone and uh, camera mounts so I can properly show you what the, what the car can do. Um, one of the great things about these Teslas is that not only are they very exciting cars and very capable cars, I would argue better than anything else out there on the road to begin with, but they just get better and better over time, um, you know, via these software updates, because each car is equipped with a mobile data connection up with a built-in SIM card. I'm pretty sure it's um, through Telstra in Australia, um, which enables Tesla to push through any improvements, optimizations, and updates to all the cars out there on the on the ground, um, which you know means the cars get better and better over time. And not only are they exciting cars to begin with, but the excitement just continues because we're all waiting for well, people <laughs> that are geeks like me anyway, waiting for all these updates to to come through. So when I bought the car, um, you know, it didn't have version ten. Uh, version ten um, in Australia didn't come with Smart Summon then, but it and had Netflix, which it didn't have before, which is absolutely gorgeous on this, you know, uh, what is it, sixteen inch screen or something. Um, it didn't have um, it didn't have YouTube, which is fantastic. And I'm not even sure if it had the web browser, so I can get my emails on it now and you know browse the internet, etc. The kids can plug their um, Xbox controllers <laughs> into it, and you know one of the latest games that came with version 10 is Cuphead, so they can use the steering wheel or the controllers to um, go around the track uh, in, in a Model 3 because it's a Tesla version. Uh, car Ryoki, not karaoke, <laughs> came out. Uh, car as in C A R. Uh, um, came out um, in version 10 as well. In this version, single pedal driving um, came out, which means that unless you're driving really aggressively or it's an emergency, you never have to use the, the, the brake pedal, which is fantastic because you're not going to wear out the brake pads. Um, that said, I don't think you would have worn out the brake pads anyway. I owned a Holden Volt for four years prior to this one and it, it's done way over 100,000 kilometers and I'm, I haven't actually had it exactly measured but uh, every time I asked the service people about the brake pads they've always said to me look yeah that you've got plenty plenty on there to go so and that seems to be consistent from most Tesla and other EV owners that yeah brake pads is just something you don't have to do because there's only a few moving parts in an EV you know there's no oil changes, there's no air filter changes, there's no spark plus spark plugs to you know to replace, there's no timing boards, there's none of that stuff. And in Tesla themselves, when I emailed the service department, an automatic email message came back saying, look, in case you're trying to book a, a service appointment in, you don't have to service Teslas, which is you know absolutely fantastic. It saves you a good thousand dollars a year um, on servicing I, I would have thought that's not to mention all the savings from petrol and, and fuel um, of, of course the um, uh, as Elon has said not of course but in my opinion of course um, as Elon has said this is the first car to appreciate rather than depreciate in value so you don't have that insurance is cheaper I mean um, yeah it's it's been um, it's been an absolute pleasure to own um, I've had this car for about six weeks now and yeah it's been absolutely fantastic um, some of the other features that have come through the um, software updates the the most recent one it can now recognize uh, construction uh, witches hats or um, 
you know, um, what do you call them? Construction cones uh, on the side of the road, uh, side of the road, and it's quite, uh, quite good actually. Um, the interface is a black and white interface to show the car on the road, but the, but the witches hats, the the cones, the traffic cones, I think is the proper name for them. Um, they actually stick out in orange, which is actually quite useful. Um, yeah, this, this car has been absolutely fantastic. So, um, look, I don't want to <laughs> go on any longer. I've gone on for, for long enough. I'm excited to show you what the car can do. So I'm going to go and find a um, safe spot somewhere where we can test it out. Look, you know, um, you, you, this the Smart Summon is still in beta mode, so you should be sensible about these things. Um, that said, I, I feel completely, you know, completely calm, I, you know, Look, it is an expensive car. I've been waiting for three and a half years um, to to um, to take delivery of it. I ordered it on the first of April 2016 when Elon first unveiled it. So the last thing I want to do is put this fairly expensive and longer waited piece of equipment into a, into a wall. But um, like I said, I feel completely comfortable with it. Um, I've done just over 4,000 kilometres in this car now, and a good two and a half thousand of it has been in autopilot mode where the car steers itself changes lanes by itself by itself accelerates and brakes by itself um, and um, it's been pretty much flawless and i have tried auto park i'll include a video um, of how it auto parks not just parallel parking but into a a, a normal parking spot as well uh, which is uh, i'm not sure if other cars can do that yet and pretty sure they can't do it as, as good as tesla does it um, so um so I'll, yeah like i said i'll include that video as well um but yeah look really excited to <laughs> to to show you what the what the car can do uh like i said i feel very comfortable that it will perform as expected don't forget though this is only going to be the first iteration um, or the first version of smart summon so just like autopilot no doubt it's only going to get better with time actually you know has already tweeted that um, the next version in a couple of weeks is going to be silky smooth so i can't wait for that um, but yeah let's go and find a safe spot um, while i do that in the meantime um, please um, take this opportunity to subscribe and press the notification bell this is one of the first videos that I've done and by pressing the notification bell you'll be able to get alerted to any new videos as as and when they come out so um, let's go let's uh, find this uh, quiet spot and show you what the what the car is capable of okay as you can see there's the car parked there again now I'm hoping you can oh, that's the battery hoping you can see this crane um, so I'm going to go into the summon menu now the reason why I've parked the car a little bit forward is because I want to show you the old summon first so as you can see it gives you either forward or reverse this is the old summon summon so if you hold down forward the car will just start going forward in a straight line and I'm doing this to um, park the car in the parking spot so let's see how we go so the old summon is fairly slow and here we go and I just let my finger go perfect and it stops and I'm not sure if you heard that but it's just applied its handbrake so what we'll do now is we'll try out the new summon so that's smart summon so I'll press that button there you can see it's already planned how to route I'm going to press go to target and hold my finger down on that so as you can see it's already registered it put its four indicators on. It's trying to work out whether it should reverse or what it should do. Um, no. Might have to try that again. Yep. So it's not perfect. Um, it's still the first version. It's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty close to perfect, but not quite perfect. Oh, here she comes. Yes, I'm over here. Don't forget, this is using using GPS, and GPS is only accurate to about three or four or five meters. Um, yeah, it's a bit too close. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that that one wasn't perfect, but close enough. Very impressive, nevertheless. Okay, as you can see, 
got the car parked in another parking spot so I'm going to go through the same procedure press go to target just put my finger on the button now there goes the handbrake and it's going forward which way is it going to go now oh, is it going to turn around and come back <laughs> just had a look in the front decided no it might be easier to reverse This is amazing technology when you think about it. Absolutely amazing technology. There's the indicator. Yes, it's right in front of me now. Yeah, you're going to need to adjust. Where is this way stopping? I oh, know, still adjusting. So I've still got my finger down. Yeah, it's fairly close to me, about half a meter away. Still got my finger on it. There you go, there's the handbrake they just heard. So I'll take my finger off. There you go, very good. <laughs> this is the point of view from the second camera mounted inside the car. I've also enabled the reversing camera to come up on the car's screen as well. One, two, three, holding my finger down. The car's responded straight away. How good is that? And here she comes. Got the indicator on, very smart. <laughs> so it's slowing down a little bit, doesn't want to hit me, obviously. Oh no, it's coming close. Still a little bit jittery. Yeah, that's a little bit too close for comfort. Yeah, that's better. Is that it? No, still adjusting. No, that's it now. So not bad. Still within about three metres away, three steps away. Not bad at all. Just waiting for this button to come up. All right, there we go. Holding my finger down. Let's see if it... <laughs> oh. Oh, it's decided to go around the front. <laughs> you thought better of it. Oh, look, it's indicating as well. <laughs> that is amazing. Yep, over here, please. Indicating again. Very good. Yes, over here, please. <laughs> Still keeping my finger down. Keep them coming. Come to Papa. <laughs> oh, wow. I oh, know, it's still going. So I've got my finger down. So I decided to come a bit closer. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm just going to test out the auto park feature. There's a parking spot just on the left here. It's not a parallel park, it's a traditional normal parking spot. So I'll put it into reverse, it gives me the, it's found the spot. I press start and take my hands and feet completely off. So I've got my foot ready to hit the brake just in case. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, oh no, it's just that. It's just braked just to readjust just to realign itself keep on coming <laughs> nice done perfect <laughs> time for some questions and answers so first question is it any good <laughs> 
Yes, as you can probably tell, I'm very impressed, um, not just by Smart Summon in and of itself, but the the transition to Smart Summon, I just feel it's gone up in, in leaps and bounds. I mean, it's, it's really quite incredible. So just as an example, the original summon was fairly limited in that it could only move forward and back. So yes, it could turn the steering wheel, but only to realign the wheels to allow the vehicle to move either forward in reverse and only by a few meters at a time. As you saw there um, in the video, obviously you can turn and even indicate, uh, move back and forth and all the rest of it. And I was standing a good 20 or 30 meters from the car when I was testing it. It performed without an issue and you could be up to about 60 meters away, I believe, and it should still uh, work okay. Um, and that, that was, you know, another limitation of the original summon in that you had to be three to five meters away from the car. So, um, yeah, um, the other limitation was the original summon would only work on an absolutely flat surface. So if there was any inclination whatsoever, if there was any slope uh, or gradient, uh, it, just, it would just completely stop and fail to work. Whereas I've tested Smart Summon on our driveway, which is quite steep, no issues um, there whatsoever. Another thing that I've also noticed that's been fixed is, so the original Summon had a fair few connectivity issues, yeah, you know, intermittent issues in that maybe three, four times out of 10, it would fail to make the connection between the mobile phone and the car, even if you stood the three to five meters away. Whereas I would have tested Smart Summon, you know, at least a dozen times without any issues whatsoever. In fact, not only did it connect either instantly or straight away and it did connect that way in, in most most of the times that I tried it. But um, the few times that there was a lag, the lag was fairly short, look, two, two seconds max. So yeah, very impressed with um, just how far it's come in, in a fairly short period of time as well. It feels like it's got the fingerprints of AI all over this. Um, you know, it feels like an exponential improvement rather than a, than a linear one. Okay, next question, um, how much does it cost? In order to get Smart Summon, you have to buy the full self-driving, which is a um, optional extra. When I bought the car, the FSD option was $7,100 Aussie. Uh, it then went up to $8,500 Australian dollars soon after. Now, this is one of the implications of Smart Summon being rolled out. Elon has already tweeted that any country that has Smart Summon rolled out will see an increase of $1,000 US to the FSD option. And it's already gone up in the US and Canada, etc. So as this gets rolled out over the next two, three weeks, I expect the full self-driving option to go from 8,500 Australian to 10,000 Aussie. So if you're in the market to buy a Tesla and you're looking at full self-driving, I would look at doing something fairly early, maybe perhaps over the next few days or within the next week, um, any longer, and you could probably find that you're paying an extra $1,500. Actually, on that point, if you are in the market to buy a Tesla, make sure you use a referral link. Uh, it doesn't have to be my link or my code, um, use any ones, but I'll put my link in the description section of this video down below because if you use the code, it will give you an extra or the link. If you get to the Tesla website via the URL, via the website link, then you'll get 1500 kilometers of free supercharging, which could definitely come in handy. Um, if you find that, and you've got to do that at the time that you order the vehicle, if you find that your order doesn't have the 1500 kilometers in there before paying any deposit or what have you, just cancel it, log in again via the link, and you should have the 1500 kilometers uh, there. So make sure you do that. Um, so yeah, as I said, um, I expect full self-driving to cost an extra $1,500 more or $10,000 Aussie, which would make it perhaps the, um, the most expensive single optional extra. I think the performance wheels might be fairly expensive, but yeah, it should make it um, the most expensive option. In fact, it won't just be a $1,500 increase in Australia it will actually be substantially more because you've got to account for the luxury car tax. So it's actually really disappointing um, in countries like the US and Europe. Um, 
drivers are incentivized to buy environmentally friendly uh, uh, well evs electric vehicles or hybrids uh, in fact in california um, not long ago there was a seven thousand five hundred dollar us subsidy that's gone down to five thousand now it's at two and a half thousand dollars um, actually might even be halving again but um for for quite a period of time there was a fairly substantial incentive unfortunately we don't have anything of that magnitude here in australia in fact um we get slugged the luxury car tax. There are some small incentives, and yes, the threshold for um, emissions, low emissions vehicles is a little bit higher as far as the luxury car tax is concerned. But um, I mean, all you need to do is buy the, you know, the Model 3 starts at around the $74,000 mark, add full self driving to it, and you're well into that luxury car tax bracket. And I think it's quite unfair because you'll find that. Yes, it might, you know, yes, it's fairly unusual for a middle class person to be buying a luxury internal combustion engine vehicle, but it's fairly common for a middle class person to buy a luxury EV. And that's because um, people are looking at the total ownership cost of the car, not just the, the outright purchase cost um, at, the, at the point of sale. So perfect, perfect example. In the US, the Tesla Model 3 is the highest selling car, not the highest selling EV, but the highest selling car of in any segment um, by revenue in Q3 in the last quarter. So by volumes, I think it was about third or fourth. So, you know, Elon has made the comparison and um, there's been a lot of comparisons online looking at the total ownership cost of the car and putting it on par with something like a Toyota Camry or a Honda Accord or um, Toyota Corolla, so, something of that uh, ilk. So, um, so it's well within the grasp of middle class people, and yeah, I just don't feel like it's fair to be slugged a luxury car tax. And you know, some people argue that we do have some small incentives uh, for EVs. I know insurance, for example, is um, cheaper, but that's got nothing to do with, with the government. That's just um, private companies, um, uh, you know, in and of themselves um, offering that discount. But um, any incentives that we may have, which aren't even worthwhile mentioning, they're so insignificant, are more than outweighed by these luxury car tax, which I really feel is um, is quite unfair but um, in, enough about that um, important thing to note prices of full self-driving are going to increase by at least fifteen hundred dollars in my opinion over the next couple of weeks so if you're in the market use a referral code and do something fairly fairly quickly uh, next question I heard criticisms saying it's been uh, sorry I need my glasses oh no um, it's been in it's been released. Sorry, I've I've heard. Can't read my own writing. Sorry about that. I've heard criticism saying it's been released in an unfinished state. Well, of course it has. Um, I, see, a lot of these criticisms that I feel, um, or a lot of these complaints, I feel are a little bit misguided in that people are missing a lot of key points here. I mean, of course it's unfinished. It will always be unfinished. It will always be a work in progress. Um, First of all, this is a beta version um, of the software. So a beta version of any software is designed for testing purposes. So there's only that much testing that an organization can do in-house. Um, you need to do much wider testing in all different situations, different countries, etc. So you need to roll, roll it out in a slow release to the, the wider ownership base. And this, this is how... You know, this is how the Tesla model works in that, especially anything to do with any of the autonomous features, in that Tesla makes an improvement. They roll it out fairly early in a beta version. The idea is that the owners test the software. The vehicle gathers the data. The data is then uploaded to the Tesla servers. Um, now, if you're a Tesla owner, you have the option to override that data. The data is uploaded anonymously anyway, but should you feel like you don't wish for that to happen, that's fine. You can override that. I, I'm pretty sure that even the default feature is with that being off, um, but 
I know most Tesla owners want to have that feature turned on. Um, it's so that um, they can be part of improving the the next update. And if there's a lot of data that comes from situations that are unique to your driving or to to, to your situation, then you'll find that the next update should, in theory and perhaps in practice, should be a lot better for you versus others. So it's in your own best interest to upload the data to um, to, to Tesla. And like I said, this is how it works. So data gets uploaded to the servers, gets run through the AI engine, and that's how AI works. It needs vast, huge, immense quantities of data for it to improve. In fact, um, Elon mentioned on the Q3 earnings call on the 23rd of October. So Tesla Summit, Tesla Smart Summit came out in the US towards the end of September. So in that three week period between that and the Q3 earnings call, he mentioned there was already a million downloads, or, sorry, million uses of Smart Summit, uh, which is, you know, this is where Tesla is just so many years ahead of the rest of the competition in that they've got this huge fleet that they can roll out these uh, updates to and they can get all these huge amounts of data back to improve um, to, to improve the next update and um, that's that's how AI works and that's where you get these exponential improvements from is, is this huge amount of data so um, you know if people are criticizing it for it being unfinished well of course it's unfinished it's, it will always be unfinished it, it will always be a work in progress that's how AI works and um, would, you, would you want it you know this, this is one of the unique things about a Tesla in that the car keeps on getting better and better with each update um, it's it's not a, you know, this sort of question comes from that older mindset in that you buy a car and that's all you get and it's pretty much superseded. As Elon said, it's pretty much superseded as soon as you drive it out of the the, the dealership. Whereas, um, first of all, you don't drive this car out of dealership. There are no dealerships. You just order it online via your mobile phone. That's how I ordered my my um, Model 3 on an iPhone and it arrived on the back of a um Till tray truck, and I knew within five minutes exactly when it was arriving. So can't fold the service um, there at all. So yeah, it's a very different mindset. You, you know, you're, you're you're buying something that's going to improve and only get better with time. So it's always going to be unfinished. So um, that actually um, gets me on to the next question. Isn't this just a gimmick? I mean, what would you use it for? Once again, I think it's missing the the bigger picture here, the the, the bigger point. Um, it, actually, I'll, I'll focus I'll focus on this first, and then we'll talk about the bigger picture. So, is it a gimmick? Yes, absolutely. Of course, it's a gimmick. Um, it's a great gimmick. It's it's lots of fun, and um, that's one of the great things. It, it's pretty much part of the. Um, Tesla brand in that not only do the employees have fun, so obviously the mission is to accelerate the world's transition to uh, sustainable transport, but to do it in a fun way. Um, and I mean, perfect example, um, if I can find it here, uh, the the whoopee cushion um, is a perfect example. Let me see if I can, here we go. Um, there you go and you can do it by seat so that's the right speaker left rear right rear so perfect example it's it's all about having fun um the tesla model x um it's one of the easter eggs um has been this light show which i got to experience at the recent tesla owners event it was great fun um and you can review it, it's, it's online. Um, so basically the car opens its gold wing doors and uses the doors to make it look like it's trying to fly away and it you know, puts on a light show that's in tune with the music. It's, it's, it's great fun. I mean, that's what Tesla is all about. So is it a gimmick? Yes, absolutely. Um, and like I said, I think sort of focusing on the immediate use cases, we're missing the bigger picture here, but let me address the immediate use cases. Um, you know, what can it be used for was, was the question. Um, well, I can think of at least two or three use cases. So first one, which is a fairly obvious one, let's say you've come out of a shopping center and all of a sudden it's pouring rain and you probably don't feel like lugging your shopping bags or your shopping trolley 
um, across the whole car park in the pouring rain. Well, instead you can call the car to come to you. You can summon it to come to you. A great, very practical use case. Another example, let's say you've forgotten where you've parked your car in a big shopping center car park or in a big car park anywhere. Well, what you can do is you can summon the car to come to you as long as it's within 60 meters. But um, obviously that's with the beta version. No doubt when it's fully rolled out, it'll, that 60 meters will be a wider perimeter I would imagine and obviously you know in testing mode you probably don't want to use it this way but um, you know it really should be used the way it's been designed um, and you know just don't forget you're still testing it but when it's out for full release yes absolutely that's one of the um, you know one of the use cases um, if you've forgotten where you've parked your car rather than walking 10 minutes across a whole car park trying to look for a car you can have it come to you in fact there's already a feature on the tesla app which allows you to find where the car is by honking the horn so you can honk the horn on the car and you can have heaps of fun with this um, on your on your phone app and you know by um, by the sound you can try and work out where the car is in the shopping center car park a third use case is actually the reverse of smart summon. So when this is all released, and I expect you know, maybe in the next six months this might become available, where, and I'm guilty of this quite often, my wife will attest to this, she's criticised me for this fairly often, um, especially if it's been a day, busy day, and I'm, let's say I'm dropping the kids off at a sports event, I usually get there just in time, um, and especially if you get there just on the hour or five minutes plus or minus of the hour or right on the half hour when the previous session is finishing and the new one is beginning, you'll find it's quite hard to find a parking spot, whereas all you have to do is wait 10 minutes and there'll be plenty of parking spots. So what you could do, or let's say you go into a footy match and you know pretty much impossible to find parking or a busy restaurant, what have you, you could pretty much drive yourself to the entrance, to the front door, and basically drop yourself off and send the car off to go and find its own parking spot so another very useful feature so so what can it be useful well there's three use cases right there but as i said at the beginning of this focusing on the immediate use cases i think we're missing the bigger picture and the bigger picture here is as elon has mentioned on the q3 earnings call once again um, i'm not sure if these were his exact words but this is my interpretation of it anyway um, this is the second step or second part of a three three part to total in that we've pretty much already solved uh, or a, a fair way down the track of solving highway or freeway driving and autopilot's been sensational in the us they already have navigate on autopilot we're still on the previous version but i've had this car for 4,000 kilometers, a good two and a half thousand of it has been done in autopilot mode, and it's been pretty much flawless. I can only think of one instance where it's disengaged um, in, in a situation where um, I initially thought it shouldn't have disengaged, where I was using it in a way for what it was intended in that I was on a highway and there was lane marking. So what, what actually happened was we were on our way to Hyden, which is near Wave Rock, about 400 kilometers from Perth. And by the way, if you've ever get a chance, I've been to Hyden, we've all been there numerous times, a fantastic, we we're actually there for work, but um, this time around, but absolutely great place to go and visit you know for a holiday you've got to see wave rock but there's so many other tourist attractions um yeah definitely worthwhile seeing by the way so uh, just a quick plug for hiding there um but yeah it was a 400 kilometer journey about three hours of that um, was all done in autopilot mode and there was an instance so we left soon after sunrise and we were coming over the top of a crest and all of a sudden the sun just pretty much blinded me um, and I just assumed that it had blinded the sensors as well. So uh, autopilot um, disengaged and prompted me to take over. Now I initially thought it was because of the sun but I soon realized that what actually happened was there was a right on top of that crest was a side road that was coming in and those lane markings being a country road had just completely disappeared so um, there was no lane markings prior or after that intersection if you like um, and that's how at least this version of autopilot is 
designed to use the lane markings as a guide and it's been designed to disengage when the lane markings disappear or when it can't see them. So um, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's behaved exactly as this version has been designed to behave. So um, I can't even count that incident. So the whole two and a half thousand kilometers roughly that I've done in autopilot mode have been pretty much flawless. That's been my experience anyway. And reading a lot of stuff online, it seems like most other Tesla owners seems, seem to concur with that as well in that they've had pretty much um, a flawless experience as well. Um, bar you know, a few sort of corner cases, which uh, were fairly early on in autopilot's uh, involvement, but where it is now, it is almost flawless. Um, that doesn't mean that you can go to sleep on and let the car drive itself. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, you, you know, you are still legally the responsible for driving the vehicle. So you've got to be, as I had to be ready to take over from autopilot on top of that crest, you've always got to be ready to um, to re-engage and start driving. In fact, the car will prompt you every 10 seconds, it, it varies, um, to have your hands on the wheel. So you've got to have your hands on the wheel and if it feels like you don't have, you're not, you don't have your hands on the wheel, it will prompt you. In fact, it will um, pretty much disengage completely and it will say, okay, no more autopilot for the rest of this journey. So you actually got to pull over, put it into park and then you can start again. So, um, but um, yeah, so what I was saying is I feel, sorry, going off on a bit of a tangent there. I feel we've already solved highway driving. So high speed, um, mainly um, straight or fairly shallow turns. So we solved that situation. Smart Summon goes towards the fairly constrained, constricted car park situation. In that last video, you would have ho hopefully seen how the car can auto park itself, not just parallel park, but in between two cars um, that are parked, um, you know, at a perpendicular angle to the um, to the to the road. So, um, and pretty sure no other car can do that as yet. I, I may be wrong. Um, please let me know. I'll include my email in the description section below. Please let me know if you have any comments by the way to any of this um, but yeah if, if if I'm saying something that's not right please let me know uh, but I'm pretty sure the Model 3 or Tesla is the only car that can do that and if, if I'm wrong if there are other cars that can do it I'm pretty sure there's no other car that can do it as well as the Tesla but I'm happy to be corrected um, so I feel like we've we are starting to solve the car park situation with Smart Summon, and it's only going to get better, as Elon has said, as a result of these million uses, they've now had the chance to run all this through the AI engine, and in a couple of weeks, the next version should be silky smooth, as he uh, tweeted, so I uh, can't wait uh, for that version. So we've got highway, we're solving highway driving, we're solving the car park situation, so there's now only one missing piece, which is that missing piece in the middle. So we've got the fast driving, the slow driving. It's that medium speed driving in suburban roads, which are fairly narrow and windy. And there's roundabouts, there's stop signs, there's traffic lights. So it, it feels like once that's done, then we're at the point that Elon has been talking about, which is having a feature complete for self-driving. In terms of that, he's given some timing around that, um, which was one of the questions, you know, when is this going to be rolled out so that you can use it properly? Well, um, Elon was saying, not just in terms of Smart Summon, but full self-driving in, in general, um, that there will be a few lucky um, users that will get to have a chance at giving this a shot. Um, I imagine all uh, in the US. Um, fairly early in the new year of 2020 and then he was saying that there should be a, a feature complete version of this available by 2020. Now we're not talking level 5 autonomy so you know the driver would still have to be present and ready to take over I imagine but the car would be able to self-drive itself in pretty much most situations in that you could go from home to work and you would not need to intervene um, but you should still be ready to intervene if, if you if you need to so you were saying by the end of 2020 we could be at that 
point, and then he was giving um, a guidance in terms of regulators, um, allowing this to be rolled out in most of the jurisdictions around the world, you know, another 12 months. So he was saying, you know, regulators will probably need another six to 12 months to get comfortable with older data and allow this to be rolled out in, in that version. So really, we could be talking about possibly having full self-driving, um, at least all the features um, in two years, which is quite incredible. And I know some people will say, oh, look, you know, that's just in on time. You've got to take that with a pinch of salt. Um, I think that's a, you know, that's an, a bit of an unfair shot. I mean, oh, look, no, it is justified in, in that if you go back and have a look at the track record, yes, there has been numerous instances where um, Tesla and Elon has put out a timeline for a feature to be rolled out and then it's taken several months longer. But come on, cut the guy some slack. I mean, these guys, Elon and the Tesla team, these guys are working on things that up until now have been unproven and impossible. I mean, they're right on the cutting edge of what's even possible. So in that context, to be a few months late, yeah, yeah. Yes, you can you, you can note it, but I don't think you should be complaining or um, criticizing either Elon or Tesla for that. In fact, um, it seems like Elon's already taken some of this criticism on board and seems like he's made a bit of a shift in that um, in, in how he puts out or how Tesla puts out timelines. Perfect example is the Model Y um, reaching production. So initially it was um, due to be in full production by end of 2020. Um, already we've seen prototypes um, on the internet uh, driving around uh, the US um, and they're now talking about beginning production in Q1 of 2020. I mean, that's a full, you know, it's almost 12 months, not a full 12 months, that's, that's almost 12 months ahead of time. So, um, yeah, it seems like, um, yeah, it seems like we'll find going forward, um, Elon time will be a, will be a phrase of the past and a lot of these features will come out sooner than we actually think. And I would be very excited to see full self-driving um, come online in, in the next two years um, as, um, as, as has been um, suggested. And that's really the bigger picture here, that this is just a small part of a bigger um, a bigger total in, in terms of full self-driving, um, not just in terms of um, the environment. So we know that uh, an average car is only used 4% of the time, so 96% of the time it's completely unused. So not, not only does it go towards that, but it goes towards safety as well. The US National Highway Traffic Administration or whatever they called um, has come out with figures showing that autopilot, without autopilot, the average accident or incident is once in half a mile. In With autopilot, it's one in every 4.3 miles, I think I've read somewhere. Elon has already mentioned um, something, a little, so that would be eight times safer um, than a human driver. Um, Elon has already mentioned that autopilot is at least twice as good as an average driver. So once again, you know, um, I think he was understating things. Um, and, you know, I know initially they put out a goal of autopilot or full self-driving being 10 times safer than, than a human driver. So I think that's the ultimate goal of this. So if you think about all the deaths on the road, um, you know, it's quite incredible. Look, I know some people will say, oh, look, but I, I love driving. And look, I agree, I, I love driving as much as the second guy. Does that mean I love driving in traffic when I'm dropping the kids off at school and I've got other things on my mind? Well, not, not really, but on a nice open um, road by the ocean or, you know, through the countryside, absolutely, I love driving. Um, that doesn't mean that you won't be able to drive, but um, but sure, yeah, I'm sure you'll still be able to retain that option. But, um, you know, human beings shouldn't be completely freed to have access to these two and a half ton or two one and a half ton killing machines as as Elon put it um, so sure you can still drive the car but it might mean that you might not be able to 
take it through a crowd of people in a busy street so and you know kill you know a dozen people in one shot so um yeah i, I think um I, I think that's the bigger picture here um that not just the environment but full self-driving and um the reduction in deaths and um, all the rest of that so um that pretty much um covers it in terms of the questions um i will make another note uh, i'll put my email address in the description section below so if you have any questions feel free to email them feel free to record a voice mess message or even send me a video if it's not too large and i'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have or help out in any way i can um, if you have any questions about teslas or even sort of broader questions about sustainable transport even sustainable energy solar pv that's the industry that i work in feel free to send me questions so um I'll um, uh, and I'll try my best to answer those. Just keep in mind, I work full time, so I can only do these things in after hours during weekends and at night. So it might take several days to to answer any questions. But I'll mention once again, if you're in the market to buy a Tesla, look at doing something fairly early. If you're in, if if that's your time frame, uh, even if it's not, if you're making an order, use a referral code to get the 1500 kilometers of free supercharging. I'll be honest, I prefer it if you use my code. Um, if you do, I think I'll get 1500 kilometers of free supercharging as well, which will definitely come in handy for me. That said, we're fairly starved for superchargers. We've got plenty of chargers around WA, but fairly starved for superchargers. Um, in a for those that live outside of Australia. For a state that's the size of Texas, we only have, well, up until now, we've only got one supercharger, and that's more than three hours from the capital city, which is in Eaton Shopping Centre near Bunbury. It's been there for a couple of years. Um, there's a new one that's due to um, be installed in the next um, month or two um, in the Perth CBD, so, so that's great in downtown Perth, as Americans would say, um, but we desperately need a lot more. I know um, over east in the eastern states of Australia, they've I've counted about 30 odd um, superchargers that they have there. Um, if you look at the United States, for instance, I remember seeing um, a quote that there's a charger, I think it was, they were referring to Tesla chargers, within at least 100 miles of the next charger so that's 160 kilometers when you think about it teslas have 300 mile 500 600 kilometer ranges so to have a tesla charger and that's not taking into account by the sounds of things other chargers that tesla cars can charge as well and don't forget you can charge your car and any you know electrical outlet at any gpo you know a 10 amp outlet in australia no problems at all 15 amp even better 32 amp even better some of the faster chargers or ccs or some of the you know really fast chargers are great and superchargers you can charge you know with the new versions of the model 3 as much as 300 kilometers in about 10 10 minutes which is you know absolutely mind-blowing um, so yeah, we're in desperate need of a few more superchargers in WA. If anyone's uh, listening, that can do anything about that. Um, but um, yeah, look, um, that's pretty much it from me. Um, this is one of the first YouTube videos that I've done. So hopefully, the, the rest of them won't be as as long as this, and hopefully they'll be uh, they'll get better with time. But um, if you enjoy this sort of content, which as I said, it's to do with Tesla, obviously, EVs, sustainable transport in general, sustainable energy, solar PV batteries, that sort of thing. If if that interests you, or if you know anyone else that this might appeal to, feel free to forward on and share this video. Um, if you liked it, if you got some value out of it, if you at least found, found it interesting, please subscribe and please press the notification bell next to the subscribe button so that you can get alerted to these videos as and when um, they come out. So that's about it for me. So stay safe, stay sustainable, and stay ahead of the curve. Ciao.